Acromegaly is a relatively rare disorder of gross hormone excess coming from a pituitary tumor. And when I said relatively rare, is we found out more recently that it's possibly that we underdiagnose acromegaly as a physician. And overall, from the large numbers of pituitary tumors, there are several studies showing that acromegaly and also other type of pituitary tumors is more frequently than previously thought. The issue with the gross hormone excess coming from the pituitary tumor is that it has devastating effects if it's long-term in excess over a huge variety of uh, signs and symptoms, but also different organs. So patients with acromegaly, yes, they will have acral changes, everything will grow, their face will change, they will have frontal bossing, they will have ring size, shoes, increased shoe size, but they are slow, so nobody will notice for years and years. The mean delay in diagnosis, it's still 11 years in US, even now, and it's pretty similar with what it was before. On top of that, these patients will have joint pain due to destructions of the cartilage. They will have increased risk of colonic polyp, increased risk of uh, thyroid enlargement. They will have more diabetes than uh, their counterparts at this age. They have hypertension. They have more obstructive sleep apnea. So because of all these relatively non-specific types of diseases, patients have one or two more comorbidities and sometimes Nobody's putting two and two together for years until they have really uh, prolonged gross hormone excess, but also, unfortunately, this is associated with a large tumor. So when the patients get diagnosed, most of them already have a macroadenoma. And a macroadenoma is a tumor that's more than, we define it as more than one centimeter, but these patients sometimes are presenting with tumors that are two centimeters, three centimeter. And we're talking about a large size tumor when we're looking at the normal size of the pituitary is the size of a pea. So it's something that's pretty enlarged in the cellular area. How we usually treat acromegaly, first line of treatment for the large majority of patients per endocrine society guidelines is transphenoidal surgery. The issue is most of these patients, almost half of them, if they already have a large tumor in, lar in the cavernous sinus area, we know that the surgeon is not going to be able to take the tumor out. So then we need medical therapy. We have right now several medical therapies approved and there are several groups. The somatostatin receptor ligands are in most cases the first line of treatment and we have octreotide, sub-Q, Oxtreotide LAR, Lenreotide, and more recently approved Pesireotide LAR. We're also using as a medication that targets the pituitary to decrease the gross hormone, cabergoline. It's not approved for gross hormone, but sometimes we're using, especially in association with the other drugs, for very mild disease. I rarely use it as a unique treatment for acromegaly. The other type of groups of drugs that we have available right now for acromegaly, it's pegvisomant. It's a blocker of the gross hormone, and though it does not decrease the gross hormone, per se, actually it's increasing it, it decreases the IGF-1 that's made in the liver, that also it, the IGF, many of the effects of gross hormone excess are through the IGF-1.